Hello team, welcome to our mainframe DB2 tutorial. Today we are going to discuss data set. This is a very important topic in a mainframe. So before starting this session, I want to say something. Uh, behind this session, I really working hard and uh, I want your support guys. So at least subscribe this channel and if you want this lecture and lecture series then please subscribe and like and comment also. And uh, this is a small contribution from my side. I hope this session will help you to understand the mainframe environment. So this is the agenda which we covered in this session. After completing this unit you are able to understand what is the data set. First, we need to understand what is the data set, types of data set, how we use the data set utility to create a new data set, how we define the data set option, ISPF editor. Before this session, also I discussed ISPF. What is ISPF? So, this session will discuss use how we use the ISPF editor. Okay. After that, we are going to cover data set list utility data set list action and we are trying to cover this this topics also work with sequential data set and partition data set apart from that we will cover uh, what is the difference between dash d and tape because it is a very important topic dash d so we cover dash d and tape difference between both and uh, also we cover basic terminology which used in the mainframe so this session is are going a very important session for you now we are going to discuss about the data set data set are used to store the data and information in the GS environment data set can contains a programs in a source code object code load modules data set and all if uh, we talk about the data record then it has the input to or output from a program if we talk about the space of data set so it can be allocated in a dash d and tape so dash d it's a direct access storage device and tape and other physical storage media Next is the data set divided into a two segment. First is the record oriented and second one is the stream oriented. In a record oriented, it means the data set contains a row, rows that called records that have a specific format. You always remember all record oriented has a specific format. Let's take one example. If a data set contains the payroll record, then each record in the data set might represent in a single employee like employee name employee address how many hours this employee works so hours work worked pay rate and all okay next is the stream oriented so a stream oriented it has a no specific format let's take one example if a program like a DB2 might group group the bytes of the data set into the page. So page is not fixed. Huh? So here we said like, okay, this example is 4K page. Let's start with types of data set. So data set is divided into a three types. Sequential data set, partition data set and VZAM data set. Let's discuss one by one. First one is the partition data set. Partition data set is the simplest type of data set and is a roughly equivalent to a file in a Unix, Linux or window. Next one is the partition data set. So partition data set is the collection of a storage area called a member and Partition data is not equivalent to a Linux, Unix and Windows. This is the difference between sequential data set and the partition data set. If we talk in detail, then partition data set 
is also called as PDS. So, PDS is a common terminology in a mainframe. It's a partition data set or a library. Partition data set is contains a listing of member contained in the PDS in a directory. Each member of the PDS contains a sequential oriented record. Previous, we discussed what is sequential data set. Next one is the VZAM data set. So, VZAM is a virtual storage access method. So, this is the storage management system which consists of several types of data set like KSDS, ESDS, RRDS and LDS. So, this is very important. So, KSDS is the key sequential data set. ESDS is the entry sequential data set. Next is RRDS. RRDS is the relative record data set and LDS is a linear data set. If we talk about VZAM, so VZAM data set have two component. One is the cluster. You already know what is the cluster. So it's a one is the cluster and second one is the data. My painting is very bad, so please ignore this, okay? Some VZAM data set also include in index. This is the basic terminology. I already discussed all these things. Now we are going to discuss about the dash D versus tape. So, we need to understand what is the difference between the dash D and the tape. In a GIS environment, both support there are many different types of storage media for storing the data set. The two most commonly use the disk and the tape because they can accessible either sequentially or randomly. So when we talk about the tape, then tape can be can only be accessible in a sequential. You already know. Sequential data set can store both dash D and tape. And PDS and VZAM data set are generally stored in the dash D. So disk, disk subsystem. So disk subsystem in a GIS environment consists of three components. First is the disk, second one is the read cache, and third one is the write cache. The large cache can significant and improve the performance of disk subsystem. Here you say like 1 ms to 10 ms. So that's all for today. Actually this recording already goes 8 minutes. So we'll continue this lecture in next session. So please subscribe. Thank you all. Bye.